Hey, what's going on guys? Ben Brewster here with triathletics.com. This is one of the drills that we'll use to kind of reset uh, arm timing, arm action. Uh, if an athlete's pushing into release or doesn't understand how to relax the arm back as they rotate or isn't feeling a stretch through their pec as they rotate or maybe their arm is way outside or inside 90 or maybe their shoulders are really uphill or they're leaking really forward. Um, this is kind of a controlled drill. We can really focus on the end of the throw and that rotation from the torso uh, to ultimately into layback and into ball release. So it's the end of the throw that we're focusing on, working on getting a clean path into release and a clean sequencing and segmentation from the torso up into the arm and into how the arm unwinds or unfolds into ball release. Uh, one of the more common reasons that we'll use this drill is when athletes end up pushing. So when they end up shooting the elbow in front of the face and rather than that arm spiraling out and around into elbow extension and then internal rotation, they'll basically pair those two movements and it becomes extension and internal rotation or more of a dart throwing pattern. So we'll use the lasso drill oftentimes in an Indian club routine, which you may have already watched if you're seeing this video, but then we'll take this into our actual throwing drills, our plow curve drills, sometimes our catch play as well, and try to transfer that same position and see if we can't get that arm spiraling out and around a little bit better. Uh, one thing you definitely have to realize and a, a way that this drill is sometimes screwed up is that it's still a matter of getting downhill into ball release. Uh, I do want to give credit to Baseball Development Group, uh, who I guess originally named this drill. We've been doing something similar, um, but they did put a name on this drill, and I think the lasso is a great term for it because it's the idea of that arm spiraling out and around. But what you need to be aware of, getting downhill, and while throwing sidearm is a cue that we'll sometimes use to get guys to come out and around instead of shooting the elbow forward, uh, a lot of guys end up doing the drill like this that we've seen online. And again, that's not doing anything to imitate high level throwing patterns. The idea is that you rotate down into landing with your shoulders and with the axis of rotation, unless of course you're a submarine guy. But you shouldn't be a high three quarter guy throwing from down here just because you're using the sidearm cue. So the arm should spiral out and around, but it should spiral out and around through whatever arm slot and shoulder tilt angle that you naturally have as a pitcher. So there's three progressions, regressions, variations, whatever you want to call it, for the lasso drill that we've come up with. Again, some slight variations on the BDG drill. Uh, the first is level shoulders. The second is starting with a little bit of a preset shoulder tilt elevated glove arm. And then the third is adding in a little bit of a weight shift, almost like a kind of preset rocker drill um, to kind of progress it a little bit more. So we're gonna start with level one, just level shoulders. I'll show you what that looks like. So you wanna get, uh, get in a wide stance. You don't need to get too wide, but a little bit wider than shoulder width. Typically, you're gonna to wanna to cheat that front foot open, either all the way open or hair closed, so that as you rotate, you can rotate into that front leg and not get stuck around a closed front leg. Okay, this front foot should not come up or move from this point in the drill. That stays fixed. As far as the upper half, the upper half is going to stay closed from the starting position. That front shoulder stays close to the target. That glove arm is up and that throwing arm is up as well. Ideally, we want that elbow in line with the shoulders and we want that elbow roughly at 90 degrees, give or take five or 10 degrees in either direction, depending on your specific mechanics. So upper half closed, glove arm up. Generally, I like a little bit of internal rotation. You don't want to already be here at this point of your throw. Glove arm up, thumb down, tends to be good advice depending on the athlete. Elbow up, uh, neutral wrist as well, so not overly supinated and not overly pronated, showing the ball back towards second base. This is a good position from the upper half. As far as the lower half, there's two different ways to do this. For athletes that have very good hip internal rotation uh, and can do this, a lot of times we'll like to preset that back foot forward so the hips are forward, upper half is closed. This only really works for guys that are very mobile through the hips, through the T-spine, but this is the position we use for a certain percentage of guys, maybe 20 or 30% of our athletes use this one right here, and it would look something like this. Preset, rotate downhill. Hips open, uh, anchored front foot, preset shoulders closed, rotate downhill. The other variation that we'll use is closing off the pelvis, Still cheating open the front foot, but that back foot is now even with where the rubber would be. Upper half is still closed, same position. 
And from here, it's a little bit different because we don't want everything rotating completely as one. We want the back hip to go first, then the upper half goes. So it looks like this. So again, slightly different, but it just changes that starting position to a little bit more comfortable position, uh, depending on your particular hip structure and your mobility limitations. But again, I'm rotating downhill. That back shoulder is rotating above where that front shoulder is on a downhill axis. That arm is unfolding through that axis, getting on top of the ball, driving it down through the wall. You shouldn't be hitting the wall down here knee height. You shouldn't be hitting the wall up above your head. It should be somewhere around eye level to chest level, assuming you're 10, 15 feet away from the wall like I am here. Uh, and that just ensures that you're actually gonna be throwing balls at a specific angle as though you were throwing to a target, a strike zone uh, target 60 feet away. If you're throwing too low on the wall, it's basically teaching your release point to spike balls 40 feet into the ground. Too high, obviously, it's teaching you to throw balls over the backstop. So just be aware of where you're throwing on the wall whenever you do this drill, something I rehash in most of these drill videos that have to do with plyos. So that's level one. Again, two versions, closed, downhill, or the back foot, even with the rubber. Version two, we can add a little bit more complexity, basically backtrack a, back a couple frames in the throw a couple milliseconds in the throw. So instead of essentially mimicking a landing position, we can mimic just before landing. So it might look like this. We're now shifting into the back glute just a hair, elevating that glove side just a hair. Arm stays still at 90 degrees and still in line with the shoulders, but we've just tilted our shoulders to accommodate it. So we've tilted our shoulders, loaded into the back glute a hair. So we're just adding in a little bit more of the throw to mimic just before landing to add in a little bit, uh, another percentage of the throw to work on. So it looks like this. Normal starting position, elevated glove side. Normal, elevated glove side. From here, we're still trying to find a way to get downhill. So how do we do that without just spinning? Well, we're trying to use the glove arm to screw our way downhill from here to here to there. So it looks like this. That glove arm screws us down from the shoulder tilt to level at landing where we normally were at the first progression to downhill. You'll notice that front foot still anchored, not moving. You'll notice my pelvis rotating through, pulling that front knee into extension. One other thing I want to mention that I forgot to mention is that as I'm rotating and what this drill teaches really well, that arm is not initiating the rotation. In other words, let's say you get these starting positions right. You're right here. The first thing that goes isn't the arm leading the way. The arm actually lags back behind my body. The first thing that goes, assuming you've gotten the hips going, shoulders rotate, the arm gets left behind. The arm actually stays back here, gets left behind, what this does is this creates a stretch through my throwing arm pec. Stretch happens and then there's a recoil. So I'm feeling the arm get left behind. I'm feeling a stretch through my chest and then I'm capturing that stretch and pulling into release via my very, very powerful pec muscles. Your pec is one of the most powerful muscles in your upper body along with your lats. It's a pulling into release with your strong muscles. It's not a push or a chop into release with your weaker tricep muscles. The final progression, if that's all very easy for you, before you kind of graduate from this drill, is adding in a dynamic weight shift. So stationary landing, stationary just before landing. Now we're gonna add in a little bit of a dynamic weight shift. So almost like a rocker drill, but again, just presetting the arm up. So again, two different ways we can deal with the back foot situation. The first one, get here, a little bit of a rock. So the weight goes from the back toes and the full foot on the front foot to full fit on the back foot, just the heel on the front foot. 
weight shift here, and throw. Here, throw. Back foot even with the rubber. Same thing. Weight comes back, load up the glute, toe comes up, throw. Shoulders closed, arm up, toe comes up, throw. Downhill, arm lags behind, pulling with my pec through my arm slot into ball release. So I know I've thrown a lot at you, obviously, a lot of cues, a lot of things to work on, but this really is one of the most simple drills where we can preset the positions we want and make sure you're feeling the right cues, the right muscles, and the right sequencing that we then hopefully take into all the other drills that we're doing for the day. Uh, using this as kind of one of the initial drills to preset uh, and groove some of these patterns. <laughs>